PR Connections Radio presents... Welcome to Vegas Hockey Hub here on PRConnectionsRadio.com, the voice of new media. I'm your host, Ian Kelly, And on this edition of Vegas Hockey Hub, we are going to be breaking down and doing something a little bit different here on this channel. Now, previously on Vegas Hockey Hub, I've talked about NHL arenas. I've done a bit of a ranking system, and I kind of used what everybody else has accounted for. I looked at websites. I saw what people were saying when it came to how hockey arenas were around and everything like that. But what I'm going to be doing on this edition of Vegas Hockey Hub is a little bit different. It's going to be a personalized video, and that is going to be ranking every NHL arena that your host has been to. Um, For clarification, I've only been to seven of the 32 arenas that the NHL has had. I know I need to step up my game. I'm planning on going to more arenas in the future. That's going to take time, of course. But what we're going to be doing on this episode is looking at the seven arenas that your host, Ian Rakelli, has been to. And I'm going to be ranking them from worst to best. So seven will be the worst and first will be the best. And, you know, it's going to be really interesting because there are some arenas that are kind of just an average, you know, experience. You're going to go there. You're going to have a decent time, stuff like that. You're going to have some hockey stuff. And then there are about four arenas that I have been to personally where it feels like they kind of want the fans to be going the next step. You know, they kind of take that next step forward and try to have the fans be put into it. So it's going to be a really fun video, and I do have to give praise to PRConnectionsRadio.com, the voice of new media. Check out all the fantastic content they have on the network. We have about a dozen shows, including Vegas Hockey Hub. So my recommendation would be to go check out PRConnectionsRadio.com, the voice of new media. Also go to the YouTube channel at PR Connections. And if you also want to subscribe to our social media pages, we are everywhere at Vegas Hockey Hub. And then we also have my social media as well. So if you want to follow me, I am at Ian J. Rickelli. So with this hockey arena list that we are going to be doing, so it's at number seven, and this is going to be the lowest of the low. This is going to be arena that is going to be dead last on my list when it comes to the hockey arenas I have been to. And that is the footprint center for the Arizona Coyotes. Now, for clarification, when I actually went, it was not called the Footprint Center. It was actually a completely different name entirely. But let me explain to you what I remember about the Arizona Coyotes Arena. So when I went to it, and when I was there, I was walking around, you're sitting there, you're kind of seeing what the whole arena is. Look, it's a nice arena for an NBA team. It is a good-looking arena if you're a basketball fan. If you're a Phoenix Suns fan and you liked Steve Nash, if you liked Amari Stoudemire, you know, if you were somebody who loved the NBA, you probably looked at the Footprint Center and you were like, well, there's no complaints here. It's a really nice-looking stadium. The arena looks nice. The outside with the, with the clean look and everything, it looks like a really nice arena. The problem is... I am ranking this based off of NHL. I'm ranking it based off of hockey. And the problem that the Arizona Coyotes had and what they really have always had in the NHL and will continue to have in the NHL for the foreseen future, the problem Arizona has is that they have never really been the main marquee when it comes to where they are. They've always felt like they're second fiddle. Like they're kind of just, you know, in the background They really don't care about them at all. They're just kind of, you know, swept under the rug, kind of as a second best option. And unfortunately, that's what this arena felt like. This arena really felt like it was a basketball purpose arena. It really seemed like this arena was really built and meant for the NBA, not the NHL. So from a hockey perspective, 
This arena, I really did not see as a positive in that situation. That's the reason why it is ranked last on my list. Of every hockey arena I have been to from the NHL. And uh, when it comes to Arizona Coyotes, obviously they play at the Mullet Arena. They've also gone out and played the Talking uh, Talking Stick, uh, Gila River. You know, they've had all a bunch of different names with the Arizona Coyotes. America West Center, stuff like that. But I will say with the Arizona Coyotes, regardless of what the future brings, regardless of what happens in the future, I've always been questioned. I've always been doubtful about the rumors and speculation about this team. So until they are officially gone, until they are dead, I am not going to sit here and say anything negative about Arizona. In your host, Ian Kelly's opinion, they're a team that just exists. Um, there's two teams in the NHL that really just exist for me. I really have no positive or negative feelings toward them. I just kind of shrug my shoulders and just go, eh. You know, they exist. So for the Arizona Coyotes, they are ranked seventh here when it comes to the hockey arena. And it's just simply put, this was an arena that really felt like an NBA arena that just so happened to have an NHL team put into it. So after number seven, which is the Arizona Coyotes, we move over to number six. And we're going to go to the Arrowhead Pond, as it is now called the Honda Center out there in Anaheim. Now, to give you some context, when the Anaheim Ducks took on the Dallas Stars, that was actually back in March. That was actually a really good situation. The Anaheim Ducks, they were going to be taking on a team that had the best record in the NHL. And your host, you know, he had tickets. You know, he was going to be, you know, doing all of that, had tickets ready, all of that, with the Anaheim Ducks, going to go see the Honda Center, the Dallas Stars, taking on the Anaheim Ducks. And, you know, it's really interesting because we did that back in March. And then last year, which was in 2023, the Anaheim Angels, we were going to see them. We passed by the Honda Center on the way. I'm rocking my really cool Johnny Cash shirt as I'm, as I'm driving past the Honda Center. And uh, I'll just say with the two experiences I've had with the Honda Center, I put it in that average tier of the NHL. Uh, this really just seems like a fine, okay average NHL arena. There really isn't anything bad about it. There's nothing really negative about it. Like I've said before, it's just an average kind of C level NHL arena. And that is the Honda center. So in my two experiences that we have had at the Honda center, that's really the only thing I can describe it as. It's just an average arena when it comes to when you're walking around it, when you're at the parking lot, when you're at the facility, you know, when you're sitting there and you're kind of around the area, that's really the only thing I can describe it as, is that it just seems like an average arena. And that's not a bad thing. You know, like I said, it's not a negative. But when I'm ranking NHL arenas, the Anaheim Ducks, the Arrowhead Pond, formerly, now currently the Honda Center, that's the reason why I kind of put it on the same length as I do now. In fact, when I did my ranking of the 32 NHL arenas, where I did use, you know, uh, people and I did look at other people's lists trying to kind of get a consensus on it. It seemed like most people agree with your host, Ian Rickelli, that the Honda Center is an average stadium in the NHL. So at number six, I'm going with the Anaheim Ducks. I am going with the Honda Center. And like I said, I've had two experiences at the Honda Center, one in 2023 and then a second one in 2024. And it's just going to be really interesting when it comes to the Honda Center and seeing what it happens in terms of long term. But yeah, at number six, I had number seven, the Arizona Coyotes. At number six, in my NHL ranking of NHL arenas I have been to, the Anaheim Ducks, they are at number six. So as we are talking about hockey arenas here on Vegas Hockey Hub, on PRConnectionsRadio.com, the voice of new media, I'm your host, Ian Rickelli. And getting into the top five, and at number five, I will be going to the Pepsi Center, formerly known. Now it is the Ball Arena out there in Denver. So the Colorado Avalanche, this was when it was in my younger years, and this is when the Colorado Avalanche were in their prime, you know. This is when the Colorado Avalanche had Patrick Waugh, Joe Sackick, Milan Heydu, Peter Forsberg. This is when the Colorado Avalanche was at 
the peak of the Colorado Avalanche before they had their experience they've had the last four or five years with Ratanen, McCarr, McKinnon, you know, Landis Scog, all those guys that are in there now. And what I vividly remember about the Pepsi Center is the fact that this was an arena that is a comfort arena. This is an arena that you can sit there, you can have a good time. Of course, when you're watching Joe Sackett and Peter Forsberg, of course, you're going to have a really good time being at the Colorado Avalanche and watching them play. They were taking on the Los Angeles Kings at the time. That was the game that I did go to. It was Colorado versus L.A. Funny enough, when they've had the Frozen Fury back in the late 2000s, early 2010s, I got to once again see the Colorado Avalanche and L.A. Kings. As a matter of fact, your host, Ian Raquelli, has seen Colorado versus L.A. at least five times in my life. So kind of a weird situation there, but true that Colorado and L.A., your host has seen them five different times. Now, to the arena itself, it is an above-average arena. You know, the Pepsi Center, it was built, you know, back in the late, back in the mid to late 90s. This was a Colorado Avalanche who was coming off the high back then, relocating from Quebec, now going to Denver. And I'm not going to sit here and say that it has become a bit dated, but you can tell that when it comes to the construction, and a lot of these 90 stadiums are kind of starting to look that way, is that as the decades go by, you can tell what arenas were built in the 90s. The Saddle Dome, for example, you could tell that it is a stadium that has kind of been around for a while. So with the Ball Arena, my only critique I have about it is that as the time goes and it does start to age more and more, you are going to be noticing that it starts starting to look a bit dated as time goes by. Of course, you could do renovations, of course, because the Carter Avalanche have won a Stanley Cup, because the Denver Nuggets have won an NBA Finals. I would not be surprised if there was renovations done to the Pepsi Center, now the Ball Arena. And yeah, at number five, I have to go with the Carter Avalanche. And like I said, when I did go here, you had the Carter Avalanche, LA Kings, you know, saw the Kings versus Avalanche four or five times in my life. And this is a stadium that is good. And it was a, you know, solid arena for sure, but it just kind of stays where it's at. And that's at number five. Now, getting on to the list itself, at number four is the Vancouver Canucks, and that is the Rogers Arena. Now, to give you some context, back in January, your host, Ian Raquelli, there was a winter classic that happened between the Seattle Kraken and the Vegas Golden Knights. And uh, the day after, my family and I, we went over, went to the border, we presented our passports, we go over to Vancouver, and we take the drive, we go past the BC Palace, which is directly right across from the Rogers Arena of the Vancouver Canucks. And as we're driving up to the Rogers Arena, you know, we walk out, you know, it is raining at this point, which is always, you know, typical Pacific Northwest. But with the Vancouver Canucks, you're walking around the arena, I'm sitting there taking photos, doing videos and all that. Vancouver Canucks are taking on the Ottawa Senators that night. And uh, I will say from the Vancouver Canucks, this is an arena that is very solid. Regardless if you're walking around the team shop and all of that, the Rogers Arena is a solid arena for sure. To me, it is not a top 10. It's not on the echelon of something that you would want to meet on your dream list. But overall, when it comes to the Vancouver Canucks, when it comes to the Rogers Arena, it was a solid arena when I went back in January and saw the Vancouver Canucks. I saw the Rogers Arena. And it is just an arena that I definitely could put as a solid tier. And this is just something that when you look at the Vancouver Canucks, it is going to be something where you see them in the playoffs. You have the atmosphere as well. The fans are really friendly, by the way. Um, I know some people say it's a stereotype, but it is actually a good stereotype. Vancouver Canucks fans were very friendly to me. Um, I do have to mention that. I did mention that on Twitter a while back. That the Vancouver Canucks are very friendly to your host, Ian, to your host Ian Raquelli. And who knows? Maybe in the future, you know, maybe at some point, the Vancouver Canucks can get over the hump and win their first Stanley Cup in franchise history. Uh, hopefully, the Vegas Golden Knights can do what they need to do 
But with the Vancouver Canucks, it would be pretty nice to see your Vancouver Canucks end up winning a Stanley Cup someday, having the Rogers Arena, having a parade in Vancouver, and then not burning their city down like they did in 2011. So our top three arenas, okay? The top three that your host, Ian Kelly has seen. Now, I have said that the Arizona Coyotes, that was last on my list at number six, is the Arrowhead Pond, now the Honda Center in Anaheim. At number five, the Pepsi Center, now called the Ball Arena in Colorado. And then at number four was the Vancouver Canucks and the Rogers Arena. At number three, now this is going to be an arena that I did go to a few years back. And this is a some this is going to be an arena, by the way, that doesn't get enough credit because the atmosphere of this arena is the best part about it. The way it is presented, the presentation of this arena, they definitely deserve their praise. Uh, the Climate Pledge Arena out there in Seattle, the fact that they took the Key Bank Arena and they found a way to renovate it, to build it from the bottom up pretty much, and create a brand new arena uh, uh, on top of it, that was a great touch there. In fact, if I didn't even tell you that it used to be the Key Bank Arena, I feel like if you actually were in the arena and you're walking around, you're seeing everything about it, you wouldn't really tell that the Seattle Kraken were playing in the old Supersonics Arena. Um, really nice touch there. I like what this arena is about. And more importantly, when it comes to Seattle Kraken, when it comes to the Climate Pledge Arena, this is a really solid arena in the NHL. The atmosphere is great. The fans are pretty good. I will say that when it comes to when you're walking around, you're seeing the arena, there's some good touches there that you do have to give praise to. Now, for our example, the Seattle Kraken, we're taking on the Vegas Golden Knights. I have family in Seattle. So while I was in Seattle, I went to go see the Kraken take on the Golden Knights, and that was a good experience there. Now, I will point out with the Seattle Kraken, this is just a situation where this is a team, the newest team in the NHL, and this arena has definitely been a good addition to the Seattle Kraken. So the arena itself, I like what we've seen from them there. And uh, this is going to definitely be a good situation. And I will have the Seattle Kraken be on that list there when it comes to the top three, ranking every NHL arena that I have been to. And the Seattle Kraken, I really like what I saw from them. And I definitely would say that if I go see my family again in Seattle, I will go see the Seattle Kraken. I will go to Climate Pledge Arena I did have a really good time going there and checking out the arena itself. The top two. This is going to be what I'm going to say once again. The top two arenas in the NHL that your host Ian Raquelli has been to. And this is going to be kind of interesting, but kind of not. Because if you actually know me, and if you actually know your host Ian Raquelli, you would understand that this is going to be kind of a subjective and obviously my perspective when it comes to the NHL arenas. Now, with the United Center out there in Chicago, this is a top-of-the-line, top-tier arena in the NHL. Now, when I did my ranking list, I had them in the top five for a reason. And to set up the story here, back in 2017 – the Chicago Blackhawks, they were kind of around their dynasty run. And your host, Ian Raquelli, in May, saw the Chicago Blackhawks out there at the United Center. And, you know, you're sitting there, you're driving past, you see the United Center, you have the Michael Jordan statue, you have all the stuff on the outside, which does look incredible. And then just the atmosphere alone of the Chicago Blackhawks, what an incredible arena this is. Now, obviously, there's going to be purists and there's going to be old school guys who are always going to say, oh, what about Chicago Stadium? Well, for first off, I wasn't old enough to see the Chicago Stadium. But due to historical archives, I will tell you, Chicago Stadium was elite too. Chicago Stadium was an elite NHL arena. The United Center, an elite NHL arena. 
And uh, what a great time that was. And uh, especially it being during the prime, having Jonathan Taves, having Patrick Kane, you have Duncan Keith, you have Andrew Shaw, Brent, you know, you have Brett Seabrook. There was so much talent on that roster back then at the time. And, you know, still had our Tammy Panarin before they traded him off for Brandon Saad. And uh, this is definitely United Center where the Chicago Blackhawks, I had a great time. Obviously, being in Chicago itself, I had a really good experience going there. But overall, when it comes to Chicago Blackhawks, the United Center, this is an arena that you can definitely tip your cap to and say that it is a top tier, one of the best in the NHL. But it's not number one. Number one is John Wick mode. Number one is the best presentation in the NHL today. Number one, the hockey arena that I have been to. I have been to this arena at least 100 times in my life by now. And the number one arena that I have been to, of course, I am talking about the Fortress. I'm talking about T-Mobile Arena. I'm talking about your Vegas Golden Knights. And uh, man, I could talk for days and days about how incredible this arena is. Now, I will say for my example, since 2017, since the over 100 times I have been to this arena, it is a highly top-tier arena from the, from the architecture, from the way it's presented on the outside, from the way it's presented on the inside. This is a high-quality arena from the fact that you can actually take the bus, spend $4, and go down there $2 from, $2 back. That's a good, solid job there. Um, you also have in terms of transportation, that is some A-tier stuff as well. If you want to go do parking, they have some stuff there you can do. It's, ac it's accessible, stuff like that. <clears throat> now, depending on if you're in the lower bowl, if you're in the medium bowl, if you're in the top, if you're in the top bowl, you know, if you are, you know, out there in the nosebleeds, if you are out there in the hide level, if you're doing the sweets, if you're rich enough to do that, this is an arena that appeals to everybody. This is an arena where if you walk in as a hockey fan, you are going to get an experience. You're not just going to get a hockey game. You're going to get a show with this hockey game. You're going to get a pregame presentation never done like before. All right, you're going to have a show done before the game. You're going to have a night. You're going to have the fight before the game even kicks off. And you're also going to have special effects. You're going to have graphics. You're going to have so much stuff added to T-Mobile Arena that does make it spotlight. There's so many different aspects and cool stuff about this arena that makes it unique here in Las Vegas. Um, you also have to mention that they do have the gold mask and the gold logo that comes down from the ceiling, the gold night helmet that comes down from the ceiling. You have Brian Danielson's music from AEW coming down, you know, dun, 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 dun. like, you know, you have that going on. And then you have them with the drums and all of that. The presentation is absolutely incredible. And then you have John Wick Mode, which is one of the best songs out there, putting people in the mood, getting people on their feet, getting them hyped up for the Vegas Golden Knights. They skate onto the rink. Everyone is on their feet. Everyone's clapping. Everyone's cheering. It's a loud situation there. T-Mobile Arena has a unique factor to them as the fan participation is a huge part of why it works. The fans are a major part of why T-Mobile Arena is what it is. Similar to United Center in Chicago, where you have the best chance, I will say, the people in Chicago, you are creative as heck with your chance out the United Center. The T-Mobile Arena, you also have funny skits. They play on the Titantrons. You also have the fan participation where they have people cheering. You have the hosts coming down. They talk to different people. You have the cheerleaders, you have the night crew, you, know, you have the people skating around the ice, picking up all that stuff. I do appreciate every aspect of what T-Mobile Arena does. 
And by the way, uh, when the Vegas Golden Knights score a goal, uh, I honestly don't talk about goal songs enough, and there's obviously a, a clear reason why. But if I had to bring this up, look, Colorado Avalanche, you have Blink-182. You, know, you have all the small things. That's good for you. Uh, obviously, United Center, they have one of the best goal songs in the NHL, probably in history. But when it comes to T-Mobile Arena, when you have – you know, Vegas Lights by Panic of the Disco being the gold song. That's incredible there. And then when they pick up the victory, Viva Las Vegas by Elvis Presley being played throughout the entire arena as the fans are celebrating, coming home from a good victory. That is a solid situation there. So T-Mobile Arena, that is number one when I'm talking about every hockey arena that I have been to. And with us having about five minutes left, I will be doing a quick pivot, and I'm going to very quickly mention a minor league hockey arena that I have been to. And, you know, I didn't include minor league hockey because I felt like that wouldn't be fair in general. But as an honorable mention, I do have to mention this. So, in the ECHL, they have a team called the Utah Grizzlies. And the Utah Grizzlies, they were in the AHL, they were in the IHL before becoming an ECHL team. They are an affiliate of the Colorado Avalanche right now. And the Utah Grizzlies, I was in, I was in Salt Lake when I was growing up younger. And the Utah Grizzlies, they played at what they called the East Center, now known as the Maverick Center. And the Utah Grizzlies and Maverick Center, if you want to have a good time, if you want to have a minor league hockey experience where you're going to have a fun situation, I will say that Salt Lake City, and when it comes to the Utah Grizzlies itself, when you go out there, when you go to the arena, the Maverick Center, it was used during the 2002 Olympics out there in Salt Lake City when they did the Winter Olympics there. And you can tell that it is a Olympic hockey arena. Um, you can tell that there's a lot of good about the Maverick Center. And the Utah Grizzlies have a really good, solid arena out there in Salt Lake City. So I will mention that as my honorable mention, the fact that the Maverick Center, the ECHL arena out there for the Utah Grizzlies. And if you ever go to Utah, if you ever have a chance to go out there and watch a minor league hockey game, I would recommend the Utah Grizzlies. Uh, obviously, here in Las Vegas, we have an AHL team, the Henderson Silver Knights out there at the Dollar Loan Center. So for the AHL, I would recommend the Dollar Loan Center. ECHL, I would say when it comes to that, uh, obviously mentioning the Maverick Center, that is my mention there. So this is another edition of Vegas Hockey Hub. I'm your host, Ian Rakelli, and until next time, continue watching hockey. Go support junior hockey and go Knights, go.